Genichimaru is a character that we are suspicious of from the very beginning of the Bleach story. From his physical appearance alone, he appears to be somebody that you cannot trust. He has an unrelenting stench of villainy, which is just really hard to shake off. Genichimaru is iconically remembered for his two-faced personality, as well as being central to an incredible plot twist from chapter 414 of the manga, which reveals that he hasn't been completely honest about the true nature of how his Bankai functions. Now, when Genichimaru reveals his true motives to Aizen, it is evident that he has been concealing the real abilities of his Bankai and for a very good reason. In this video, I'm going to be dissecting everything that there is to know about Genichimaru's Bankai. So make sure that you stick around until the very end of this video as I'll be uncovering why Gin had decided to work alongside Aizen and why he had concealed the abilities of his Bankai from Aizen for close to 100 years. Also, I'm going to be breaking down and analyzing the meaning behind the name of his Bankai Kamishini no Yari. With Tight Kubo, there are no accidents, and he has been very purposeful with the name that he has given Gin's Bankai, but I'll talk more about that later on in the video. Additionally, I'll be briefly analyzing the connection between Gin and Rangiku, as well as the flashbacks between their characters from chapters 129 and 415 of the manga, because they are very important plot points that help us to better understand Gin's motives as well as Gin's Bankai ability. These flashbacks tie together the story in an incredible way way as we understand the weight of Gin's decisions and how his Bankai was made for the sole purpose of defeating Aizen. So join me as we break down and analyze everything that there is to know about the Bankai of Genichimaru. <laughs> Discover the Undead Collection and be amongst the very first to join us on our journey over at Getsugard.com. In chapter 129 of the manga, we learn more about Ginichimaru's past via a flashback told from Rangiku's perspective. Here we see Gin as a child handing out some dried persimmon to Rangiku, who is lying on the ground within the forest of the Rukongai district. Gin comments on the fact that she must have spiritual energy if she has collapsed and exhausted, and she responds by commenting on the strangeness of his name. Since then, both Gin and Rangiku became close friends, and it is evident from their flashback flashbacks that Rangiku and Gin are more than just casual acquaintances. Their story is actually told in segmented flashbacks that are scattered throughout the manga. Now, as Gin and Rangiku began living together, one day there was a chance encounter in the forest that sealed Gin's destiny. In chapter 415, we see Gin collecting some firewood as he looks up to see a strange gathering of Shinigami. There appear to be three men who are bowing their heads to another man who is wielding a glowing pink orb in his hand. We quickly learn that this individual is of course Sosuke Aizen, and the glowing orb that he is holding is in fact the Hokyoku. This device is a source of much conflict within the series because when it becomes the completed Hokyoku, it propels Aizen to unparalleled heights of power. The Hokyoku was initially invented by Kisuke Urahara, and Aizen had ended up creating a replica of it. He had made it for the sole purpose of breaking down the barriers that exist between a Shinigami and a Hollow. We can see from the manga panels that it is a tiny spherical device, but it is powerful enough to be able to manifest the desires of its wielder. In chapter 415, Aizen is seen taking some form of spiritual energy from one of the Shinigami. This scene is juxtaposed against Rangiku lying helplessly on the ground. We eventually learn that Aizen was feeding the souls of hundreds of Rukongai citizens to his incomplete Hokyoku. Rangiku was among these Rukongai citizens who fell victim to Aizen's experimentations. But the difference is, is that Rangiku had a fragment of the Soul King within her, which ended up being taken away from her and was used in order to empower the Hokyoku. Now, it is because of this very vital aspect of Rangiku's soul which was stolen, which had resulted in Gin forming an enemy out of Aizen. It was at a young age that Gin had formed the desire to destroy Aizen, and his decades of loyalty had culminated into the reveal of his Bankai during the fake Karakura Town arc. This was during one of the most pivotal plot twists in all of Bleach. Since we know that Gin was a former captain, we are aware that he is among some of the most powerful characters within Bleach. Before diving into his Bankai abilities, I want to first explain how his Shikai works. This is because in chapter 507, we are reminded that no Zanpakuto in existence has a Shikai and a Bankai which are unrelated in their abilities. Depending upon a Shinigami's ability to communicate and control their Zanpakuto spirit, a Zanpakuto can manifest itself into two 
two additional forms before it returns to its sealed state. These two forms are referred to as Shikai and Bankai. Shikai is the initial release stage of a Zanbakuto where we get to see the partially manifested powers of the Shinigami's personified inner soul. A Shikai typically transforms the Zanbakuto into another unique weapon or it remains unchanged and instead displays a unique ability. A Shikai can only be activated once a Shinigami learns the name of their Zanbakuto. Gin's Shikai is referred to as Shinso which translates to God Spear and his Bankai is called Kamishini no Yari which translates to God Killing Spear. Now names are incredibly important within the story of Bleach and Kubo makes it obvious that Gin was destined to at least try and kill Aizen who himself is a false god who had the desire to sit atop of the heavens taking the vacant throne of god that the soul king occupies. One of my favorite quotes within Bleach is Gin's Bankai release command which is kill Kamishini no Yari. The way that he utters this is so simple and straight to the point. Gin's delivery makes it an epic one-liner that sends chills down your spine every time you read it. So after Gin had activated his Bankai, what was it able to achieve and how did it fare when it was executed in a battle against a Hokyoku evolved Aizen? We see a demonstration of Gin's Shikai abilities in chapter 75 when Ichigo attempts to bypass him and enter the Serete. He ends up being forcefully pushed back by the force of Gin's Shikai. We see his Shikai once again when Gin faces off against Hitsugaya in chapter 132. He activates his Shikai using the release command shoot to kill pierce him. Even in its released form his Shikai looks like an ordinary sword. In its Shikai state we can see that Shinzo's blade grows white and extends at high speed in order to pierce Gin's opponent from a distance. In chapter 75 we get a demonstration of the powerful force that is generated when a Zanpakuto is extended. Gin is able to effortlessly push back both Ichigo and the giant Jidambo out from under the Serite gate. Now when Rangiku had intervened in the fight between Gin and Hitsugaya, her Zanpakuto Hainako had started a crack from the sheer force generated from blocking Shinzo. In addition to these abilities, Gin can maintain the extension of his Zanpakuto in its Shikai state and he can swing his blade around in wide arcs attacking multiple targets at the same time. When he retracts his Zanpakuto Shinzo, it displays the ability to also bend. In chapter 339, we learn that Shinzo's maximum length is equivalent to 100 times its original length. Gin explains to Ichigo that this fact alone had ended up earning his Zanpakuto the nickname Hundred Swords. Before Gin's Bankai, Kamishini no Yari was revealed, we could probably deduce that it's an extension of its Shikai power, because even in its Bankai state it does not change in appearance, aside from having the ability to extend its length. In chapter 399, Gin states that his Zanpakuto can extend up to 8 miles in its Bankai form. This ability absolutely crushes the laws of physics as we see how easily entire buildings are shredded in half. The force, cutting power, length and speed generated from Kamishine no Yari are vastly amplified to the point where Gin is capable of swiftly cutting an entire town in half with a single slash of his Zanpakuto while standing a considerable distance away. Now the next statement has caused a lot of debates amongst fans as in chapter 400 Gin states that his Zanpakuto can extend itself up to 8.1 miles at 500 times the speed of sound. This would be exactly 106.6 miles per second in order to arrive at its full length in under 0.08 seconds. I don't know about you guys but these statistics sound way too impossible to even imagine. This means that Gin's weapon is not just the longest Sanpakuto but the fastest. The extension and contraction speed of Kamishini no Yari is highly dangerous and Gin does attempt to downplay its speed whenever he talks about his Sanpakuto. Ichigo in chapter 399 states that the scariest thing about his Zanpakuto, it's not its destructive force or its length, but rather the speed of its lengthening and contracting. Kamishini no Yari may seem relatively harmless when compared to other Bankai, but it's probably one of the most dangerous when applied to a practical situation. Prior to him revealing the true abilities of his Bankai, Gin focuses on the length and power of his Zanpakuto so that he continues to have this psychological advantage over Aizen. In chapter 404, Gin uses a 
another ability of Kamishini no Yari. This power is known as Buto, as he adopts a stand where he firmly grips his Zanpakuto with both hands and places the hilt of his blade squarely on the center of his chest. Gin is then able to utilize the tremendous extension and contraction properties of his Zanpakuto to an even more terrifying extent than its normal state. Kubo shows us how fast this is by illustrating how Ichigo barely has any time to register what is happening. Gin's attack occurs in the form of a piercing maneuver where the extension and contraction of Gin's blade becomes almost completely unseen no matter how closely you observe it. Gin then releases another command for his Bankai called Kamishini no Yari Buto Renjin. This ability repeats the action of extending and then contracting his Zanpakuto as it happens multiple times in rapid succession. This generates an apparent mass of blades that leaves little opportunity for his opponent to evade successfully. Ichigo is thrown across the buildings with such force that his hollow mask ends up being activated. Now during the final stages of the battle against Aizen, Gin reveals Kamishini no Yari's true abilities. Before his big deception is unveiled in chapter 414 of the manga, Aizen states that he is surprised by Gin. He thought that after seeing Rangiku that he would have shown her mercy. Gin then gives one of his most iconic speeches which links back to why the true abilities of his Bankai remained hidden. He says that he is a snake who has no heart. He swallows people whole and true to his snake-like nature, Ginichimaru betrays the man that he has been following for a century. Everything is going smoothly and Aizen contemplates his ascension within the Soul Society as he then casually remarks about creating the Oken but he doesn't know what's about to happen next as Gin then impales Aizen with the true form of his Bankai. Now the true beauty of how all of this is executed is the composure of Gin. In one instance, he appears to be walking away and then in a flash, Aizen doesn't know what has just hit him. Gin gives us some exposition relating to why he is the only one who is able to catch Aizen off guard. This is where we learn about the weakness of Aizen's Shikai Kyokasuigetsu. Gin had spent a decade spending time with Aizen in order to learn its weakness, which is you need to touch Aizen's Zanpakuto while it's in its sealed state so that its complete hypnosis will have no effect on you. Nobody else within the entire Gotei 13 had known this weakness except for Gin. I've always admired a lot of characters within Bleach, but Ginichimaru tops my list for having some of the most insane levels of dedication for his goal. Now, unfortunately for him, Aizen had known all along that Gin was planning to kill him, and this is why he had kept him close. Gin then pulls out an Uno reverse card and states that he has lied to Aizen about his Bankai's true power. He explains that Kamishini no Yari's true ability does not lie just in its length or speed, but it's the power of the Zanpakuto to turn into dust for just a second at the moment when it expands and contracts. There is a deadly poison within his Zanpakuto which is released into his opponent's body when his blade impales them with his poison dissolving into the blood and beginning to break down cells. Gin's Bankai enables him to leave a small portion of his Zanpakuto within his opponent's body when his Bankai retracts. This effectively allows him to kill an opponent at any time that he chooses to. Gin had left a fragment of his blade within Aizen's heart and he literally does this within a fraction of a second after piercing his chest. Gin then utters his super cool release command, Kill God Killing Spear. We then see Aizen's body breaking apart with the upper right portion of his torso completely disintegrating. Despite the well thought out plan, Aizen ends up evolving into his chrysalis stage and he states that he has now finally ascended into a being that transcends both Shinigami and Hollows. And this of course is thanks to the Hokyoku. What happens after this is absolutely heartbreaking as Gin is impaled through his body and thrown to the ground. At the very end of his life, Kamishini no Yari was obedient to its master. The god killing spear however was unable to fulfill its mission of killing the false god that is Aizen. Gin's Bankai would have definitely been able to kill Aizen but he was unable to foresee how effective the Hokyoku would have been in assisting Aizen in this situation. After failing his mission, Gin apologizes to Rangiku for not being able to return what was stolen from her. This just highlights how much of a burden Gin had placed upon his shoulders for the sake of his desire for revenge. In a recent question and answer on Kubo's official fan club Club Outside, in question 545, a fan had asked Kubo that if Gin continues to leave pieces of his Zanpakuto within his opponent's body, will his Zanpakuto eventually cease to exist? With the fan rightly assuming that Gin's Zanpakuto may not be able to restore itself. This is in line with what Mayuri had told Ichigo about a Bankai in chapter 550. 
15. He states that a damaged or broken Bankai can never be returned to its former state. But Kubo reveals that over time, the pieces that are missing from Gin's Bankai end up being restored, similar to how a snake's venom replenishes over time. In summary, Gin has an incredible Bankai. It amplifies several qualities of its Shikai, like its force, cutting power, length, and speed. And the most incredible ability of his Bankai is that he can leave a piece of his Zanpakuto inside the body of his opponent, which he is then able to dissolve into a deadly poison which kills them at a cellular level. I really love Gin's Bankai and I wish that we got to see more of it within the actual manga, but its brief showcase plays into the tragic story of Gin. In the end, what do you think about Gin's Bankai? Did you learn more about the extra abilities of his Zanpakuto like Buto and Buto Renjin? And what are your thoughts about the true power of his Bankai? Personally, I absolutely love all of the abilities of Gin's Zanpakuto as well as the culmination of his character arc with his motives to kill Aizen finally being revealed during the fake Karakura Town arc. I look forward to reading all of your thoughts about this formidable Bankai, so definitely continue the discussion in the comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach Explained video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.